Okay, let's cut the ball. This isn't gonna be one of those videos where I'm like, here are 30 ways to improve your data portfolio. Number one, the Iris data set. No, that's too surface level. We are going to be going deeper to understand what companies look for in a portfolio and how understanding that will help you to pick great projects even beyond the ones that I uncover in this video. You already know that projects are important, but if you take the same approach as everybody else, you will get the same results as everybody else. A bunch of applications where you almost never Never hear anything back. But by the end of this video, I will have introduced you to a different approach to projects and three high value, high impact projects to put your head and shoulders above the crowd. Let's first understand what's wrong with the average data scientist's approach to projects, which goes one of two ways. And tell me if any of these sound familiar. You either go self-taught or you go to university to learn to code. And as you're learning, you go through some example projects with the teacher. And by the end of the course, you have a bunch of projects and those are the only ones that you have. So you just throw those on to your GitHub, and this is a terrible approach. Who would even think that this would be effective? Well, I did. This was the exact situation that I found myself in after studying my masters. In my intro to programming course, we had a few projects. One where we coded bad classes, another way we made a binary perceptron. So I chucked those onto my profile. And guess what? None of the potential employers cared about any of them because they are terrible tier one projects. Approach number two, you realize that your current projects aren't working, probably because in my case, I graduated with a hundred other data scientists, meaning that in my class alone, there were a hundred other people with the exact same cookie cutter project. So instead of putting those up, you go onto Google or onto YouTube, click the first link and copy that walkthrough and throw that onto your GitHub instead. Okay, that's an improvement because we have some more diversity in our projects now that could potentially help us to stand out. These would be tier two projects, but that's only if we ignore the hundreds of other people that clicked the exact same link as you and had the exact same projects on their profile. And I guarantee people in either of these tiers are making use of their one key skill set. The fact that they are data scientists. We all are. We like to get value from numbers and use those numbers to have a cutting edge over competitors and push ourselves forward. So why would we not use these data skills when it comes to the job hunt? Instead of just throwing up 50 projects that are so generic, it looks like ChatGPT did them. Look into the numbers to see what employers are actually looking for and make projects that address that. And trust me, the game will change. Don't feel like doing all that research? Ah, don't worry. I got you covered because I have gone through a 1,500 data science job posted on Glassdoor and we are going to traverse these and see what common trends there are so that we can effectively tailor our portfolio project. I did some coding and ran the numbers, but I'm not going to waste your time with that. And without further ado, the top five skills most often required of data scientists in job postings are as follows, with presentation actually being a bonus six. More on that later. Fair very interesting finding because now we have a list of the most commonly requested skills for data scientists. And knowing these means we can now make a tier three type project where you see, oh, okay, people care about NLP and you could just sort of pull an NLP project out of your ass. But if you switch to a tier four approach, the highest tier, you can also assess what industries are most commonly asking for data scientists and then what skills they want within data scientists and then tailor the project to that to stand up. The top six industries looking for data scientists are on the screen right now. Now imagine how much more impactful and tailored your project would be if you did a machine learning project for the internet and telecommunication sector instead of just a random project. From the three high impact projects I'm about to name, I want you to vote in the comments which one you want us to do a walkthrough together on this channel. But the three best projects that I would recommend, the first one is clustering and segmentation for bank customers. What is clustering and segmentation? It is the process of splitting your customer base into different groups or clusters with similar traits between them. This allows you to tailor your products and offerings to different subgenre of customers that you have. Why would banks care about this? Well, honestly, there's a myriad of reasons, but if they know the different archetypes of their customers, they can now offer personalized marketing by giving them the most relevant products to them. They can prevent churn. If one certain cluster is much more likely to churn, they can look to address that. And you could even potentially create bespoke products for different groups. The second project I recommend is now natural language processing for retail. NLP is a field of data science or AI if you want, and it focuses on the interaction between computers and humans through natural language. So analyzing numbers is pretty intuitive, but text is a little bit different. So NLP effectively allows computers to read and understand and derive meaning from human languages. So why would retailers care about NLP? Well, you can help enhance customer insights. By analyzing customer reviews and feedback, retailers can gain a deeper understanding about what customers 
customers in need and prefer. You could also run sentiment analysis. NLP could also help in assessing customer sentiments, which is crucial for brand management and product development. And they could also be improved customer service, as you could automate responses to common queries by being able to effectively read what people are saying and analyze the customer interactions that can lead to more efficient and personalize customer service. The final project is predictive analytics for sales and marketing. Predictive modeling is basically using past data to predict the probability of future outcomes. So long story short, it's about predicting future trends and behaviors. So why would sales and marketing teams care about? Well, it would allow you to judge which of your marketing campaigns is most effective, because if you use your historical data to build a fairly accurate model on how you expect your sales to go, if you run a new marketing campaign and then sales suddenly drop or rise beyond the predicted level, you can either double down on the same strategy or put it aside completely. It can also do more obvious things like help you decide how much of each product you should stock at different times of the year. These are the projects that will help you stand out and if they don't resonate with you, use the general framework I taught you in this video to find something you like more that will still help you to stand out. Remember to vote for which one you want us to do on the channel and I'll show you how I conduct a project from top to bottom. But I'm not gonna lie, there's also other things you can do to stand out in the job search and in this video over here I cover how one small change to your CV will make you much more employable so click right there